Talking Animals on WMNF. Before I go a step further, in case you might have missed it, I just want to call attention to the fact that earlier this morning, Jeff Stewart, the great Jeff Stewart, delivered his final show on WMNF. So a huge loss, I think, by many accounts, one of the very best programmers that we've had for many years. He's been here, I think, a better part of 35 years. Great, great shows. I mean, no matter what kind of show he's doing, the last six years he's been doing the morning show. So all the more to urge you, if you didn't hear it this morning, to check out the archives because of course that opportunity then will not exist going forward from this week on so anyways congrats to jeff and good luck and we hope we'll coax him back to do some kind of programming or subbing or something so anyways i'm duncan strauss my guest today could be you or you or you which is to say once every year or two i jettison the chief component of the talking animals format that is a long form interview with a single guest so as to give voice to a broader array of animal organizations and leaders who can briefly describe their organizations promote upcoming fundraisers or other events call attention to pending legislation highlight an issue that may have gone under notice and so on on the eve of earth day today seemed like a fitting time to reprise this segment which may also provide airtime to listeners who have important animal oriented information to announce or comments to offer on animal uh, welfare news and more. There are two main ground rules. To give as many people as possible the opportunity to ask folks to keep their calls brief. Let's figure on two to three minutes. And uh, please do not mention the price or cost of any product, service, or event, even if it's free. So I'll be taking these calls randomly at 813-239-9663. I'd recommend you start calling now so we can kind of get organized and lined up. And while I really am going to emphasize brief phone conversations today as our focus... I will consider reading some email messages sent to dj at wmnf.org or text sent by way of 813-433-0885. Though, of course, shorter messages will stand a much better chance of being included. So while we're gearing up for this, let's hear an animal song. This is Kathleen Edwards, the great Canadian singer-songwriter who was a guest on the show in September with, uh, I think, a fitting song for uh, hopefully some of today's conversations. Who Rescued Who on Talking Animals on WMNF. I picked you up. On the other side of the river Dogs and alcohol They go so good together Keep up with you
That's Kathleen Edwards with Who Rescued Who on Talking Animals This Morning. Where again, we're shifting things around and inviting you to be the guest, really. It's Callers as Listeners Day. We do this uh, once in a while. I think it's been a couple years since the last time I've done it. So again, you're invited to call in 813-239-9663. And if there's an organization you're involved with or the leader of or an event that's coming up, fundraiser or adoption event, I know more and more of those are going back to real versus virtual. But if it's virtual, we'll be happy to discuss that as well. Anything else pending piece of legislation people should know about or do some, take some actions and steps towards news, animal welfare news, other items. So again, 813-239-9663. And again, we just figure we'll keep them sort of short, two to three minutes. And just ask again that you don't mention the price or cost of any service or event or whatever it might be. Even if it's free, that's the thing that kind of trips people up, the even if it's free part. Let me read something that came in here a while ago. And this is a Hogs for Dogs pet adoption event that's being uh, overseen under the auspices of Animal Based Charities, Inc. That's happening this Saturday, April 24th from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the Harley Davidson Newport Ritchie, which is on 5817, 5817 State Road 54 in Newport Ritchie. So again, all kinds of great animals available for adoption. But even if you're not necessarily looking to adopt at this exact moment still sounds like there's going to be lovely things to do there there's all kinds of rescue groups there's uh, pet related vendors food and drink specials holy cow concessions come on and music by blackwater jack plenty of parking and it's an unticketed family event it's pet friendly and uh, this will occur rain or shine so again that's this saturday april 24th from 11 a.m to 3 p.m hogs for dog at the harley davidson newport ritchie all right, we have another one that we'll get to in a little bit. I think maybe what we'll do is hear another animal song. In this case, got to include the eels, an animal band, and one of their animal songs, but not this time the one you might expect. So we'll get to that in a sec. Just one more time, we'll give people a chance. To, might just be tuning in to uh, hear that, again, today you have a chance to be right on the air and talk a little bit about an organization or a cause or an issue or legislation or something in the news, animal-related. Pretty much wide open within reason at 813-239-9663. Again, we will consider email messages in lieu of the phone calls. Prefer the phone calls, but uh, certainly would entertain uh, succinct email messages at dj at wmnf.org. Or, of course, we always have the text option at 813-433-0885. So, happy to hear from you. Otherwise, we'll have some announcements that we have here on hand that are coming in. And uh, I think right now, though, let's, let's do hear from the eels. Again, not one of the... Uh, ones you might expect or that we often have played in the past something a little little different this is dog faced boy the alternate version no less from the eels on talking animals on wnf Jesus 
can't save me, dog face boy. Life ain't pretty for a 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 dog face boy. from the eels with dog face boy here on talking animals on WMNF and uh, want to uh, acknowledge an important birthday uh, momentarily but just want to first again reiterate we have uh, an unusual opportunity on the show today for you to call in you yeah you yeah I'm looking at you uh to give us any kind of information you'd like about an organization that you're part of or that you lead of, uh, an animal cause that you think uh, is important or has been maybe uh, uh, received less attention than it merits or pending piece of legislation, anything else that's been in the news lately on the topic of animals, animal welfare, and so on. So we're taking these calls at 813-239-9663. And... Uh, Happy to hear from you and uh, include you in today's show. And um, but meanwhile, want to uh, say happy birthday to our own Ronnie Elliott. And by our own, I mean in, in various ways. Amazing uh, singer songwriter for many many years here, and uh, also on the air on on WNF, and a huge Talking Animals supporter. Uh, Pretty much from the get-go, and, and at least on a couple of occasions, maybe more, has uh, co-hosted the show in my absence with uh, Bev Capshaw. So anyways, just want to be sure to wish him a very happy birthday. And uh, here's something that ties into a guest we've had on the show in the past, uh, by which I'm referring to Carrie Krieger. Get this going here. So he's uh, head of and founder of an organization that, uh, called Save the Frogs that we've uh, spoken to a couple times over the years here on, on Talking Animals on WMNF. And uh, Save the Frogs has organized a huge world summit in celebration of the 13th annual Save the Frogs Day. So um, that's going to be happening starting this Friday, April 23rd at 12 p.m. That's uh, West Coast time. And it's going to run for 24 hours through Saturday, April 24th at 12 p.m. as well. And there'll be all kinds of speakers about all kinds of issues related to frogs and uh, trying to help preserve them and uh, give them better better treatment in various parts of the world depending on where that is there's uh, some that are having serious uh, population challenges etc so you can go to save the and uh, I think there's information right there when you hit get to the uh, website about the world summit and again this is all online so very easy to access and kind of come and go as you please and hear some of the um, some of the uh, programming that people have offered here. So, uh, all right. So, I think what we'll do now is uh, we'll step in and just to make sure that we don't run out of time later, we're going to do some things we would typically do maybe deeper into the show. So, I say we step into the comedy corner. With Mike Berbiglia, great comic we've had on the show in various uh, capacities. And this is a uh, piece called I'm a Bear in today's Comedy Corner on Talking Animals on WMNF. 
This is the first time I remember sleepwalking. I always had dreams about wild animals when I was a kid. When I was a kid, I had this recurring dream for years that there was a bear walking in the front door of, of my house, literally opening the front door, which is the scariest part when you think about it. A bear with opposable thumbs. Because if a bear can open a door, the sky's the limit. I don't have a plan for that one. My plan was the door. In the dream, I would hide in the kitchen cupboard with my sister Patty, and it's pitch black, and I'm scared to death, and I open up the door crack to let in some light. I look next to me, and Patty is gone, and she's been replaced by the bear. <laughs> He doesn't kill me, but he gives me kind of a coy Jack Nicholson y look. Like, will I kill you? And that's when I wake up. And I had that dream for years, and then eventually I attempted to face this lifelong fear. Patty and I went to Alaska. We went to this place called Katmai National Park, which is one of these places that has so many bears that when you arrive, they take you to what's called bear orientation. And they teach you, and, and, and it, it seems counterintuitive, but if you ever see a bear walking towards you, you're actually supposed to clap and make the bear aware of your presence. Like, I'm right here, bear. I'm right here. I'm Mike, and you're a bear. And we're okay with each other. And when they told me this, I was like, oh, I'm gonna be murdered by a bear. Because that seems like basting yourself in barbecue sauce, you know? It's like, I'm right here, bear. I'm right here. And I taste fantastic. I've applied condiments so that I'll be less bland. All right, that was Mike Birbiglia. In today's Comedy Corner with a portion of a piece called I'm a Bear, taken from his album Sleepwalk With Me Live. I'm Duncan Strauss. This is Talking Animals on WMNF. We're uh, altering the format for today's show as we do Once in a Blue Moon. And we're inviting folks to call in and become the guest for a moment or two. And uh, again, call in and talk about your organization, an event coming up, virtual or otherwise. There are some, I think, notable pieces of legislation pending that uh, people might want to address. And so many other things. So again, you can call in 813-239-9663. And we'll be happy to consider your call then. Uh, you can also email, if it's a short message, better for our purposes today, to dj at wmnf.org. Or you can text 813-433-0885. Be happy to consider those. All right, so here actually is a, an email that came in. It says, hey, Duncan, I belong to a group called Crossroad Cats, and we feed community cats at Al Lopez Park every day. We lost one of our feeders, and we're looking for one of or two people that can help us once a week with the feeding. So we even supply the food. She's giving her contact information, which presumably then is okay to share over the air. So that's 813-857-2329. Or you can write her directly by email back at vegan, Susan, C-S-U-Z-A-N-N-E, at yahoo.com. So that's great from Susan. And let's see, I think it looks like we have uh, someone we'll get involved with. Hi, you're on Talking Animals. Yeah. Talking animals. Um, I enjoy the bear scenario. I know that uh, living in the Pacific Northwest in the past, we saw bears all the time. Every time I went out for lunch, I saw another bear walking in the forest. And and so basically, they're just as frightened of, of us as we are of them. And they seem like very nice creatures. He always turned around and went the other way, and I always turned around and went the other way. It was fun. Wow! So it sounds like it worked out very well. Nobody uh, nobody freaked out. Nobody got hurt. That's correct. Well, brown bears, yeah. And ever since. Since I've been a, a kid, uh, my dad helped me build a cabin in the forest when I was in my 20s and uh, seen, seen bears for, for years. Well, that's great. Did you have any, uh, that is a great observation to share and I appreciate that. We love bears here at Talking Animals. Any uh, organization or any other news item or event coming up that you might want to call our attention to while we're chatting here? Yes, sir. Um, the uh, Ancient Islands Sierra Club meeting here in Polk County. Um, we have once uh, a month Zoom meeting and we talk about the alligator that surround us and all the critters that have surround us and we really hope that people get on board and start uh, helping us talk about these issues of course the mass extinction the sixth mass extinction is going on i don't i don't see all the birds we used to see when i was here as a kid yeah well that's uh, unfortunately been a bit of a sad through line for a lot of our shows over the years here
here, that especially people that have that are natives and have made those exact observations. So, so tell us how people could get involved in this meeting. Uh, it sounds like it's a Zoom meeting. So, if they wanted to participate, how would they get involved? So, you go to the Sierra Club website, and we're the Ancient Islands um, Sierra Club down here in Central Florida, Polk County. Okay. And uh, you you see the Zoom, and you send that a contact information to our um, secretary, uh, and she'll send you a, a Zoom link uh, so that you can get on board with us and talk about uh, the critters, the alligators down here in Florida. We recently saw mating behavior out here at Circle Bar B of the alligators. It was just fantastic. Oh, wow. That's great. So when do those meetings typically take place? Um, please forgive me. Off the top of my head, I've forgotten which week of the month. Okay. We well, people can find out when they uh, go to the website and, and look into yeah. this, right? And I'm sorry, what was your name? I forgot to ask at the beginning. Lee Rimmer, and down here in Polk County, and we love Polk County. We're working on potable water issues. We all need clean water, and we're having less and less of that, as you know. And I'm sorry, I missed your name again. Sorry. Lee. L-E-E. Oh, okay. Sorry. It sounded like there was something more to it that I missed. Okay, great. Okay, great, Lee. Well, this sounds really good, and people can uh, check out uh, getting involved in the Ancient Island Sierra Club uh, Zoom meeting um, and talking about gators, critters, and other things. And sadly, in some cases, if uh, their numbers seem to be diminishing. So uh, we appreciate your call, and thanks so much, and thanks for the observation about the bear as well. Thank you, sir. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So, all right, uh, that was Lee from Ancient Island Sierra Club, and let's get someone else involved. Hi, you're on Talking Animals on WMNF. Good morning. Duncan. Hi. My name is Peter. Okay. He's from Tarpon Springs, and I'm president of the Friends of the Anklote River. And the purpose of my call, thank you for allowing us to have a moment to share our local stories, sure. is we're trying to preserve 74 acres on the Anklote River, which is home to two eagles' nests, over 30 gopher tortoise holes, home for wading birds, sandhill cranes. There's a family of deer on there. And if people would like to help us, if they go to change.org, Tarp- Tarpon Springs, save 70 four acres on the Anklote River and sign our petition. Our petition has been racking up numbers. We've got just a little over 5,000, but we need more so we can get that up to the press so the media knows about it. And we send info links to our city commissioners who voted to approve a project on that property to put over 400 apartments, over 750 parking spaces, uh, garages, pools, clubhouses, and there's over uh, over about 25 to 30 acres of uplands with natural native flora, and they want to destroy this property, which is a throughway for the eagles and other wading birds. So I just wanted to make people aware of this. Thank God Rob allowed me to come on the air back on January 5th and speak about this, but it, we need more awareness about what's going on in Pinellas County. Yeah. I'm sure you're aware of the Gladys Douglas property. There's also the West Lostman Prop Preserve that they're trying to raise funds for, and I'll speak for them a moment. They have a deadline of July 31st to raise money to pay the school board to purchase property that the school board and the citizens of Pinellas County have already paid for. The county has said they would take care of it and do the operations and maintenance, but the school board wants to take wants $3.3 million for it, where they only paid about $900,000 for it a few years back. So we here in Pinellas County, one of the densest counties in the state, are fighting to preserve whatever natural land, which is habitat to all these animals that are barely surviving. Let me ask you this, Peter, back to the petition on change.org. So you sound like yeah. you've got, like you say, you've rolled up quite a number of uh, signatures, 5,000 or more. So is the idea that as the number gets higher and then going, you said, I think f- from there to the media, is the idea to appeal to the, the city commissioners to repeal the decision that they, they have approved this development that you were telling us about? Exactly. We're trying to let them know that the public does not want this, that this board, which is a development pro board, they've been cutting up Tarpon Springs, all the pieces of natural land that are here. They're just selling off or approving for developers to put in homes and apartments and yeah. various things that are cutting out the natural wilderness that we have left here in the north part of the county. In fact, Pinellas County is also uh, guilty of this because there's numerous properties up in the North County area in Palm Harbor where they don't have any kind of tree protection or wildlife protection ordinance on the books and they're just cutting up the north county as fast as they can well that's just of course going to lead to some of the things we've talked 
talked about, including just a moment ago with Lee, about uh, joining numbers of uh, various species. So, so we'll hope that people will uh, take to heart what you suggested about going to change.org and finding that, um, that petition. Thank you for your time, and we appreciate all you do to preserve and help the animals in this world because we're the voice for them. They can't speak. We have to speak for them. That's exactly Thank right. Th- thank you so much, Peter. Bye-bye. Appreciate it. God bless you. Same to you. Bye-bye. All right. This is Talking Animals on WMNF. And again, we've had a couple of good calls and a good email with some information. But again, if you might have just be tuning in now, my guests today are people like you calling in to talk briefly about an animal cause, organization, event, uh, meetings, petition in the case of Peter just a moment ago. Something that people you know should know about or just your comment on any kind of animal welfare issue or something going on in the news. So we're happy to take those calls at 813-239-9663. Again, short emails uh, obviously be considered as well at dj at wmnf.org. And um, of course, you know, there's also the option to text at 813 330885. So, in the meantime, I think we're going to hear another animal song. This is one kind of show that we get to hear a little more animal songs. In the old days, we used to hear animal songs in much greater proportion, but uh, as the show has kind of evolved, we've added short interviews and other things to um, to the format, so we don't hear nearly as many animal songs as we used to uh, customarily, so this is kind of a nice opportunity to uh, to do that. Let's, in fact, you know, here's one, yeah. This was, we had a birder uh, on uh, Stephanie Seymour, a veteran birder and singer, songwriter, musician, who uh, a couple years ago, 2019, released an album devoted to bird songs, literal, metaphorical, just a range of great, great songs uh, called There Are Birds. She was a guest on the show then and discussed birding and making the album more. So here's a song from that album. This is called Ruby Crowned Kinglet from Stephanie Seymour, Talking Animals on WMNF. That was Stephanie Seymour from the album There Are Birds. That was Ruby Crowned Kinglet. Again, she was a guest on the show in 2019. Really uh, great because it was a lot about birding and of course that directly influenced the album but there's uh, all kinds of other things that are less uh, literal bird songs on that album and it's a great, great collection. I want to tell you about uh, some other things coming up a bit later on WMNF. Just want to be sure to mention that today at 12.06 p.m., Janet Scherberger will be guest hosting WMNF Community Radio Midpoint Wednesday. Her guests will be Stanley G. Gray of the Revitalized Urban League of Hillsborough County and Bernice Laradon of the Dream Defenders, a group founded in 2012 after the murder of Trayvon Martin. They'll be talking about economic equity, poverty, protests, and Florida's new anti-riot law. So that's coming up just after noon here on 88.5 WMNF. Tampa and WMNF.org. So again, we're still still got a couple things that we're going to get to, and um, 
But again, happy to take calls at 813-239-9663 with uh, comments, questions, mentions of upcoming events, general overview of your organization, other things. And again, we can uh, take, as we're about to do shortly, an email at dj at wmnf.org or text at 813-433-0885. And this one says, thank you for all you do with Talking Animals. Have you had any personal encounters with a particular animal that you can share? And uh, somehow I don't think uh, the questioner is asking about like, you know, cats or dogs that might live in our house. But uh, I will say in terms of personal encounters that are unusual just because they are sort of counterintuitive for what you would normally do, especially with a a wild animal uh, and and a a mom, wild animal in particular. But a couple times, haven't been down in in a number of years now, but a couple times over the years, been fortunate enough to go to the San Ignacio Lagoon down in Baja, Mexico, where the gray whales come and give birth to their babies every year and migrate down there. And then here's the thing that's odd and fantastic and magical, especially because, again, counterintuitive or not, it's totally not only okay, but the mom whales actually encourage this. So you go out on these little uh, outboard uh, skiffs, kind of pangas, and the mom whales bring their baby whales up to the side of the boat to, like, effectively sort of introduce you to their babies. And if that's not enough, then you're actually encouraged to, like, sort of reach out and pet the mom and or the baby which again any other animal if you if it was a mom and you're doing something to come up to their uh, to their babies it'd be uh, ugliness and worse but um anyway it's just some kind of odd thing that uh, is i think unique to the uh, san ignacio lagoon anyway there still are trips that go down there i think there's been uh, obviously like everything cur- curtailed for the last year or so in the wake of the pandemic but i think resuming and um Anyway, it's, uh, it was a pretty magical thing, and, and uh, you know, I highly recommend it at some point if you can get down there. So that would be a, that would be a personal encounter with, a, with an animal that um, was pretty remarkable. So anyways, this is Talking Animals. I'm Duncan Strauss. Still got plenty of time to entertain some questions, comments, calls, announcements at 813-239-9663 or by email at dj at wmnf.org or by text at 813-433-0885. And it occurred to me that Ronnie Elliott, who we mentioned earlier, was having a birthday that in terms of his support in all kinds of ways with Talking Animals. That included playing on the Talking Animals Festival, which we did a couple times about 10 years or so ago, two years in a row. And uh, so as part of that program, we had adoption groups and vendors and food and lecturers and all kinds of stuff. But part of the the, the uh, element of it that was, I think, a lot of fun for people was we had a lot of the greatest uh, local bands all playing animal songs throughout the day. So in this case... Uh, Ronnie played See You Later Alligator, and I thought as a further nod to him and his birthday, maybe we would try to include this. So this is Ronnie Elliott doing See You Later Alligator from the Talking Animals Festival of many moons ago, about uh, just about 10 years or so ago. All right, that's Talking Animals. Thanks. Well, I saw my baby walking Sorry, pretty baby.
Kramer style Thanks so very much. Thanks to WMNF and Duncan Strauss, and thanks to Talking Animals. Take care of all the animals. Give us peace on Earth and in this dreadful, dreadful war. All right, Ronnie Elliott from the Talking Animals Festival about 10 years or so ago with his version of See You Later, Alligator. So let's take another caller here. Hi, you're on Talking Animals. Hello, can you uh, hear me? Sure can. Please go ahead. Oh, I was going to talk about uh, the alligators in Polk County out at uh, Circle Bar B. Okay. And uh, the alligators are protected now, and they're also in lots of lakes, and um, people are recognizing that uh, to take care of them. And in addition to that, there's a lot of old tortoises um, wandering around, and they apparently seem to be doing okay, but people kind of need to let them do their own thing so we have the tortoises so is there a specific protection that should be in place for the tortoises for example that aren't that you're proposing or well they tend to just kind of wander around and show up in the middle of the road or the side of the road and um um they can't run away too fast so um if people were more aware to kind of let them let them alone um it'd be better for the tortoises Oh, okay, so just sort of a general caution to just give them space, I guess is what you're saying. Uh, that's correct, yes. Okay, well, that's great. Well, thanks. What is your name, sir? Uh, my name's John. All right, John. Well, we appreciate your call. Thank you so much. Okay, have a good day. You too. Bye-bye. Hi, you're on Talking Animals on W Hi, Minute. Is this Duncan? It sure is. Who's this? Hey, hey this is Rick. Hi, Rick. He's Tampa. Hey, um, the one caller earlier kind of inspired me. Um, I've been looking as a kid and through my adult years to run into a bear and never happened. And we, my wife and I were on a meditation retreat one weekend. We were coming back on the carriage roads, um, just quiet. And we ran basically into a bear. About, I could have reached out and petted it if I wanted to. It was a big female bear on the side of the trail. And she was walking as slowly as we were. It looked like she was meditating, too. Mm. And uh, she walked away and hid behind a, uh, like a little knoll and then ran at top speed um, down the trail. So we continued on the trail and almost hit her again. Uh, it was pretty amazing after 45 years of wanting to see a bear, getting to see it twice. Wow. Um, we don't have any events um, planned, but I, I was thinking perhaps you have heard of uh, Paul Winter cor- Consort. Yes. Paul Winter. He's done some concerts where he actually, uh, it's really cool. He has one thing called the ha- Hallelujah Chorus where he, he does Handel's Messiah with uh, wolf recordings. And uh, another one is uh, he does a jazz piece uh, based on a Canyon Wren recording. So he takes he, t- he goes to Cornell's library of uh, recordings, uh, records the animal sound, and then does um, improvisation jazz pieces or classical pieces around that. Yeah, I think of him as doing a lot of whale-related um, things in the earlier years. I, I may be misremembering that, but... Uh, no, you're right. Yeah, he, okay. I think he, he made it big with whale call. And yeah, it okay. Was music all by itself, but yeah. he said, well, we can take this Canyon Land sound, uh, um, slow it down about half pe- half tempo, and then we'll just play live. So, so it's a live concert. Hmm. Uh, the, the one performer, the star soloist, is the Canyon Ran in that case. Yeah. Um, so it's really cool. I, you know, you're... Your animal sounds uh, and animal songs are great. And I was just thinking, um, you probably heard of uh, Paul Winter, and he, he does a lot with animal recording. Yeah, well, that's great. Yeah, no, he's uh, been around many moons and done a lot of really uh, great work and interesting music for sure. So thanks for calling that to our attention, Rick. So thank you so much. For thank you l- for your show. Okay, yeah. thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, bye-bye. Hi, you're on Talking Animals. Hey, Duncan. My name's Kurt from Lakeland. Hi, And, uh, you know, I... I love WMNF. Uh, I love the diversity of shows, and um, I, I don't always listen to your show, but I, I realize that the benefit of animals, we have a couple of SPCA, three SPCA animals, um, but it, it, so my question is, um, my daughter's having depression, and so the psychiatrist actually recommended that she might um, benefit, and she's been wanting a dog, uh, that she might benefit from a dog uh, from a therapeutic standpoint, and I'm sure that you're probably a little bit better versed at this. Um, <clears throat> with therapy and uh, knowing that. But my question really is, um, we're trying to look for a small dog that's hypoallergenic that doesn't shed. Um, and any recommendations uh, that you think would be, uh, any recommendations that you think would be uh, a more suitable breed? And again, we're, we're, we're scouring, you know, SPCA, Humane Society and things like that. So, right. uh, well, any 
Well, one one thing that might help you, especially if you're looking for, in this case, hypoallergenic dogs, sometimes so you, that you can still adopt and not go anywhere near the path of, of buying, you go to Pet Finder, the, uh, the, on- the online website Pet Finder, and you can put in whatever kind of breed you think would be a good fit or find if people that have allergies in the household. And those will turn up a number of dogs and rescues that are local or fairly local to your area. So that might be a good way to, to kind of look into this and get started and still kind of hit all the goals it sounds like that you have for adding this uh, dog to your household. Thank you for asking. Thank you for saying that. It's just another resource that I need. So right on time, Duncan. I appreciate you. Okay. Thanks so much for calling. Thank you. Bye-bye. And speaking of Kurt's uh, question about helping out his daughter with him suffering some depression issues by getting a dog, I want to mention that uh, next Wednesday on Talking Out with my guest will be Caleb Smith, who is 16 years old and the author of a memoir of sorts, Peace Bunny Island, The Extraordinary journey of a boy and his comfort rabbits and how they're teaching us about hope and kindness. So if you think a 16-year-old with a, with a memoir is extraordinary, wait till you hear about the five islands this young man has acquired that constitute his rabbit sanctuary on the Mississippi River called Peace Bunny Island. It's a pretty extraordinary story and I'm telling you this this young man is truly extraordinary in all kinds of ways. So I invite you to join me for that conversation with Caleb next Wednesday right here on Talking Animals on WMNF. And one of our other emailers uh, says I'm so glad to see people still get together and try to fight to preserve nature it is heartbreaking to see land that you have admired all your life all of a sudden have development signs put up a lot of the land at the north end of Bartow stretching up to circle B bar is up for development such a shame so that's from Gib and uh and another emailer says, Mercy for Animals is asking people to bring signs Thursday, Earth Day, as in tomorrow, to Curtis Hickson Park downtown between 3.30 and 5.30. And um, this is uh, going vegan for the animals and the environment, all part of the Earth Day events tomorrow at Curtis Hickson Park. So if you can, bring your signs to share your messages. But either way, be at Curtis Hickson Park in the late afternoon, 3.30 to 5.30, something you'll be able to participate in. It sounds like a great demonstration. So let's uh, let's move into name that animal tune. It's been at least two or three weeks in a row that I've had this in mind and haven't had a chance to get it on just because we've had multiple interviews and all kinds of other things going on. So, as the prize for name that animal tune, I'll be offering a copy of Rock and Roll Over a CD of all dog songs to the first person who calls 813-239-9663 and correctly identifies this animal song. It's named that animal tune on Talking Animals on WMNF. There's a crow flying black and ragged tree to tree He's black as the highway that's leading me Okay, we're going to take that. Uh, we're going to take some guesses in a moment, but uh, right now we're going to get back to our callers. So we're in the waning moments here of talking animals. So we want to make sure we don't miss anyone who has uh, tried to call in. Hi, you are on the air. You're on talking animals. Hello. Um, Hi. I really appreciate your show. Hi, and my name is Diane from Tampa. Okay. And I, I'm not a native of Florida, but having because the climate is so mild here, we've done so much more year-round camping, and I'm I'm so impressed by the different birds and wildlife we've seen and it's a new appreciation because i realize that the wilderness is not out there it is it just is and 
we're part of it. So every time we camp out, we, this last trip, we saw probably a half a dozen or more swallow-tailed kites mm. whistling in the air to each other. So maybe it was a family or there were maybe, you know, working together to get the insects in the air. I have a nice video of that on my camera. Great. I also We also had a um, different owls hooting near us, and we even had one come right into our camp on a tree, a, a large uh, great horned owl. So we got a wonderful chance just to witness the owl hooting, and, you know, we've seen the native scrub jay out walking on trails, and it's just such a wonderful, what a, what a blessing. And so I'm, I'm definitely with the other callers who want to protect the environment for the animals and birds that live in Florida. And, um, you know, it, it's scary to me with the the development that's happening. Um, so I'm supporting the protection of their environment for sure. That's great. Well, that sounds uh, born directly of great experiences that you're having with your camping expeditions and things you're seeing out there. So that's really wonderful. That's sort of the exact way that those uh, views, I think, should be uh, informed. So Yeah. And everyone just get out to your local park, take a walk and sit on a park bench and just observe. It's wonderful. That sounds exactly right. Diane, thank you so much for calling Talking Animals in WNF. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I think we're sort of nearing the end of our time here. This is Talking Animals on WMNF. Again, a reminder that it's a little afternoon. Janet Sherberger will be hosting that show I mentioned earlier on uh, Midpoint Wednesday. Guests will be Stanley J. Gray of the Revitalized Urban League of Hillsborough County and Bernice Lordon of the Dream Defenders. And uh, so they have a great conversation on tap. And again... We'll tune in next week with Caleb Smith, the uh, 16-year-old boy I told you about with the uh, memoir and all this incredible work with these uh, comfort rabbits. And uh, that's going to be next week on Talking Animals. And uh, right now, I think we're um, tail in and we'll take any callers that do call after we get off the air with our Name That Animal Tune guest. Thanks for listening. Thanks for all those who did participate. This is Talking Animals on WMNF Tampa, Brandon Largo, Wiki Wachi, and beyond. NPR News next and then more programming on WMNF.